Let's take a quick look now at using the ADB command line utility. So what I have here is I have an emulator opened up right now, and I have uh, just a regular file explorer. And what I want to do is go to the folder where I can find ADB. So I'm here on my C drive. Now when I set my machine up, what I did is I put everything in a folder called work. So go inside there, and this is the folder, the ADD bundle folder. It's the default folder name. I kept that. I go inside. So this is my installation point at this point. So for me, it was C colon work, then this AD, ADT bundle folder. So in order to get to the ADB utility, I go into the SDK folder, I go here to platform tools, and you'll find that there's ADB. Right? Remember, this is a command line utility, so I'm going to just go ahead and open up a command window. So I have a command window located here. And so now if I want to see what's connected up to ADB, I can just say ADB space devices. And you can see that right now I have the emulator hooked up to there. Right? So to actually run a command, let's just say I'll go ahead and open up a shell on there. Right? So now I'm inside of a Linux shell running inside the emulator. Right? So I can do things like say ls that says show me the list of folders uh, or list of files inside the folder where I'm attached to right now. So like ps says show me all the processes that are running over there. Of course, when I exit, now I'm back into my Windows mode. And what I want to do now is go ahead and hook up um, my actual device as well. So you can see I just connected the device, and you can tell that because the uh, window telling me that I've got a USB device hooked up pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. But now you notice if I try to run that same command I did before just by saying adb space shell, right, I get an error message saying, well, there's more than one device or emulator. I don't know which one you're talking to. Right, so if I do adb space devices now, now see that I have the emulator hooked up as well as the physical device. So if I want to connect to the physical device, I'll just do adb minus d, say for device, and then say shell. And now I have a shell running inside my actual uh, Android phone. Right? So if I do something like ls now, that's the files that are in that directory. Of course, I can change directory around. I'll just do cd tilde, which says just go back to whatever's considered the home directory. Do ls here. See that I'm running inside of a proper shell with proper Unix permissions. You can see the things are have limited capability. Do a PS. You can see that I see all the processes that are running, right? Just like before. Go ahead and exit out of here. And just one thing I'll show you real quick too is that I just do ADB devices. If I had multiple devices connected up right now, maybe I had a tablet and a phone. In that case, I couldn't use ADB D to get to the device. I'd have to name the specific device a serial number. So just to show you how to do that. I say ADB space, now when I say minus S says I want to use the serial number for it, and I need to type in this long serial number right here. So there's the serial number, and now I'll do something like the, say, shell command again. Now I went into that device by using its serial number. So you see you can do it with a serial number or by the dash D. And again, in most cases you're going to use the dash D, it's just if you happen to have multiple, de multiple devices hooked up. So let's go get an exit out of here. Now let's just say that we were having some kind of trouble. Maybe we're, we connected the device up and it didn't see it, or just the bugging was acting funny, or you know you just didn't feel that your environment was functioning correctly. That's where the ADB kill server comes in. If I say ADB kill hyphen server, now I do that, and this time I got a server not running. Very often I'll get nothing back. Let's go ahead and do something like ADB devices. See there it tells me ADB server is out of date. Now it's killing it and it's restarting it. Let's just do a kill server again here. See, that time I got nothing back. Right? So you see that the server not running even indicated that there was something kind of funny going on with my ADB server as it was when I tried to kill it. And you see that now when I do that, if I, again, if I do ADB devices again, you see that it goes ahead and restarts it for me anyway. Right? So that's the point I was making is that you know, it's, it's often to do a, good to do a kill server if things aren't working well. And even though there is a start server command, we don't normally need to use it because pretty much anything we do with ADB will go ahead and start to server up for us anyway.